Hey guys, this is New Sensei. Today we'll be covering a very frequently searched question. Uh, can I shoot in my backyard? And by extension, can I shoot on my property? Uh, and if you do choose to shoot on your property or in your backyard, uh, what are some of the safety measures you can do to make sure things don't go wrong? Now I, I personally don't practice that much at my home. Uh, I don't live that far from the club and I normally shoot after work or on the weekend. So I don't have that much reason to stay at home and shoot at home. Uh, but when I do, and you've seen my videos where I do shoot in my backyard, there are some things which may be risky, which I want to point out to you so that when you shoot in your backyard, uh, these things you want to keep in mind. I first want to start off by talking about official policy um, and some of the warnings which I really want to share with you guys. Um, a lot of you who shoot are part of a club and by extension you're part of an association or organisation. In this case, um, people who shoot at Australian clubs are likely to be members of Archery Australia. Now, the organisation likely has a general blanket insurance policy or a liability certificate, which means that any incidents which happen uh, under club conditions or under the association's uh, oversight, and by extension the club's um, insurance policy, then you, you are covered. So if you accidentally hurt someone or you get hurt, then you have some protection, basically. Um, this does not apply when you're not shooting at a recognised venue. Um, this is a, it's actually stated on the Archery Australia website and it's been put up a few times in reminders and newsletters. Um, basically, if you shoot at home, what you do at home is entirely your responsibility and whatever happens, it's on you. So, from an official standpoint, Archery Australia and by extension, most other organisations will not recommend they will not endorse you shooting in your backyard and they will push that you shoot at a proper club or range. That's the official standpoint. Now of course people are likely to do uh, so anyway. They'll, they'll shoot in their own backyard regardless of what the, um, the official policy is. And again, it's not illegal for the most part. Um, in most places, and you have to check this very carefully, um, if you don't own the property, you have to check with your landlord because that can be a, a way for the landlord to uh, evict you basically if you're practicing dangerous activities. And depending on where you are, shooting a bow and arrow may constitute a dangerous activity. So just keep that in mind. So if you don't own your property, ask your landlord. If you do own your property, uh, you have to check your local laws, your local jurisdiction, again, because this varies with areas, this varies with countries, states, local councils, and look, mostly, in most areas, what you do on your property is up to you. So you don't have, there is no law saying you can't practice archery in your backyard. This doesn't mean that it's safe. Uh, and I, I sometimes reference this one incident. Now, this happened in the, in the 2000s, early 2000s. I'll link the article in the description below. But uh, in Melbourne, um, a junior compound shooter was practicing uh, in his backyard. And this is a, a competition shooter. I think he's won um, a, a championship a while ago. Um, and in the process of uh, you t testing his sights or testing his new setup, um, the bow was accidentally discharged um, and the arrow went uh, into a neighbor's property and actually killed uh, a man. Um, this is by far the biggest possible warning that uh, it would possibly give in terms of safe shooting. Um, and the, 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 the figures of authority at the time you know, played the official policy. Um, there was no intent behind this. It wasn't um, as if the person was shooting recklessly. This was purely an accident, but accidents happen. So when you consider shooting in your backyard, consider the worst case scenario. Again, policies and laws are often there to protect people against the worst case scenario. And you might think, you know, 99.95% of the time, this will not happen. The one time it does happen, it can have catastrophic consequences. So do keep this in mind if you're choosing to practice at home. 
And if you have a choice to practice at a range, then that may be the safer option, depending on what you can do. So let's say it is legal and you have permission. What are some of the ground rules that you need to have in place? The most important one is that you don't endanger people. And secondly, and not by far, you have to make sure you don't damage property that doesn't belong to you. So there are a few things that I'm going to show you. And again, I mentioned before that I have a typical suburban backyard. So there are a few different things here which you probably have. And there are risk factors involved, which we'll try to identify as we walk through this. Focusing on that first point where you shouldn't endanger people, this might include your family or people living in your property and people who are outside the property, one thing to keep in mind is to try to avoid shooting towards entranceways. Now, the door behind me is a good example. Um, I might be doing some short range practice or your property might have uh, a particularly good setup where you can place a target here. This is not a good idea because you don't know who is going to be going in or going out. So you might be shooting and it might not be towards the door, but it might be across the door. You might be having a target over that side and you're shooting across this way. Unless there is a way to stop people from using the door, then you can't use this area because this is way too dangerous. You don't know if someone's gonna open the door and then they'll walk to your path of your arrow. That's way too dangerous. Um, also something to consider in schools as well, for those who run school activities, is to block or kind of add barricades or something to stop people using entryways if you intend to shoot across or towards that area. Now, some people have the opportunity to use a very long sight line to shoot. And in this case, I've got a driveway from the uh, gate here to the back of my garage I might have around 25 to 30 meters that's, that's quite a distance um, it's one of my preferred practice distances where it's close enough to hit the target but far enough where you're going to have to focus a bit more and some people have this luxury is this a good idea it depends on how you set it up and it depends on your orientation now, for some people, they can only shoot in one way. They might be towards that direction. That is facing an open street. That is an absolute no. Uh, it might get, you might think it's reasonably safe, and especially if you have a big target and you can hit it most of the time. Just remember, all it takes is one arrow to leave your property and you're in trouble. And it could be a car, it could be a person, it could be a child on a bicycle at risk. So you, you, can't, you shouldn't do this, I'm saying you can't do this, but you shouldn't be doing this. The risk factors are way too high. Also note that even if I place a target here, there are many places where the arrow will go through. It might go through the target, it might go through the gate. The gate doesn't do anything apart from these middle uh, poles which are very narrow. There's some canvas covering, there's lots of openings, the arrow will go through. Now, if you are going to use a place like this, because again, this, this narrow part here is actually quite perfect in terms of a shooting uh, lane. It's actually a good width for it. So if you, are, if you do have a chance to shoot towards this area, you have to enclose it. That means using safety backstops. Um, you need to cover this area with a lot of thick material which cannot be penetrated. Um, rubber or, or thick rubber sheets is a good example. There are many materials which can be used, but that's one example. But also bear in mind, apart from using the right materials, you need the right coverage. Even though I've covered the entire fence, arrows will still go over. That's still a risk factor, and it might be accidental. You might just be pulling back on your bow, you smack the butt of an accident, and then release, fires the arrow, and the defense. And you might end up hitting the house down the alleyway, down there. So those are the risk factors. So if this area is going to be used, again, I don't like this part because it's facing an open street. You have no control over what happens over this fence. But if you were to use this, you need to cover this part up here, use um, arrow-proof materials like uh, rubber sheets, and make sure that even the top part is covered. But looking about several feet above the target. In this case, you actually might see that uh, that awning there, where my, my gutters are, that might be the height. If I'm gonna use this as a target practice range, I would, I would need to make sure that my safety backstop covers up to that, that part of my roof there. That's how high it needs to be to, to have 
the most protection against any accidents which might happen. Now this setup looks fine. I've got my foam target on top of a wheelie bin which gives me the right height. I mean, that's great. Behind it is a solid brick wall. Definitely going to stop an arrow. There is a safety issue here which some people might not think of and that's ricochets. Uh, like with bullets, it's very hard to predict what will happen when an arrow hits a solid object and bounces off. Now, in often what will happen is it will simply deflect and it will flop around somewhere else on the ground. But depending on where you hit, the angle and so on, it may risk somebody else. It might risk uh, you know, your, your kids who are watching off to the side. It may come directly back at you. Now, I've had this happen to me actually, not here. But at my club, um, this is a normal target but for wooden frame and steel supports. It's hit steel, it's deflected, it's come towards me, standing in the instructor spot, or it's come back towards the arch. I've had some people actually been hit in the head uh, by the arrow coming back at them. In fact, there is, a, uh, there is a, a, an image um, which you can find on Google, which I might show later, uh, of someone shooting towards a concrete wall and it's the perfect rebound. It hits the wall, it comes right, it's the same flight path back towards the shooter. It looks like it's been shot in reverse, but <laughs> if you shoot towards a solid object, a concrete wall or a brick wall, arrows can come back at you, and that's dangerous. And uh, <laughs> that's, okay, you gotta think about this placement. It looks fine, it's actually not. Um, a similar thing happened at my school. Uh, one of my uh, teachers uh, set up an indoor range. We're having an archer activity. Um, and they were setting up inside the basketball court. So the basketball court isn't that long, but it's long enough to shoot it. So we, they had the targets against the back wall, basically. And what happened, not surprisingly, the students missed. The kids, of course, they're using overpowered bows, and they would miss. And the arrows would simply smack or, or slide past the target smack the back wall and it will skid around all across that glossy basketball floor. Um, that, that was just, you know, it's dangerous. You have arrows skidding towards, um, you know, shins and ankles. That's dangerous. Um, and uh, in fact, just last year, uh, today being the second, um, uh, a few of my U9 students were trying to set up their own archer activity as part of a project. And they, they didn't consider the layout of their, their field. So they placed the target on the back wall and said, no, you can't do that because the arrow will hit the wall and back. So if you're going to use a solid object as a, uh, as a safety backstop, you need to include some spacing. Um, placing against the wall might give you more distance, but if the arrow bounces off, then it's, it's likely to come back at you. So you, might, you should, rather, include uh, a safety backstop distance in front of the wall. Uh, that way, uh, likely the arrow might be going downwards rather than upwards and it's not going to be as dangerous um, if you do miss. Alright, now we're on the other end of my driveway and uh, basically it's my carport or garage and uh, this looks like a nice spot. It's enclosed, I've got um, some junk cluttered around but that can be tidied up. I've got a, a billet table here which I can use to put my target on. So this seems like a generally good idea. Arrows won't leave the property, they won't go too high, they won't go off to the side. Nice and enclosed, this seems okay. There is a problem. It's the material of the garage wall. It's color bond. And color bond is a very thin, um, it's kind of a corrugated um, iron material. And you might think metal will stop arrows. It won't, not this material. I'll show you why. Here is my shed, which is made from the same material, the same color bond as my garage. Now down here, you might see a very clean puncture hole. That hole was caused by this very blunt arrow. You can see the red head right there. Now this very very blunt arrow was shot from a 15 pound youth bow at 10 meters. Now if a 15 pound fiberglass youth bow can cause a clean puncture hole then you can maybe imagine what a 45 pound or 60 pound compound bow might do to this sort of material. This isn't to say that you can't use the space. You have a good space, but you need to make sure that it's arrow proof. Again, the back must be covered with material that will stop an arrow. Um, solid material is okay. Um, rubber, very good option. 
Um, even things like stacking yoga mats together could work. And I haven't tried it myself, but you need something which either will stop it directly, just by being impenetrable, or have enough friction where the arrow will not penetrate through. Now here we have a nice sight line, about 10 meters to the fence. Problem, neighbor's house over there. If you had to choose between shooting towards your neighbor house or shooting towards your house, shoot towards your house. This may seem a little silly, but you know your property. You control what's happening on this property. You know the risk factors, you can make the arrangements, you can block doorways, you can tell people don't go, don't go this way. You control where you live. You don't control what happens over there. Now, a couple of years ago, uh, someone on Reddit posted a, a freak out message where he accidentally shot an arrow over the fence for the second time uh, into somebody's house with a family, with kids, and is a lawyer. And he felt he was really stuffed. And I flipped out because just, just the, the attitude, for me, it was the attitude of being selfish and protecting, uh, covering your own ass, basically, that got to me. And you, you have to respect this, this arrangement. You have to understand that even if there is a slight risk, it might not hit a child or a dog. It just has to be seen to come onto the property they might have a case against you and you will, might find yourself in a lot of trouble. Um, you know, worst case scenario, somebody gets hurt, somebody gets killed. But even the remote possibility, you've got to limit that risk. So while you can control your property and perhaps the people in your family, in your house, this is a risk factor which you cannot take. Even if you make this safe, put arrowproof materials or have increased the, uh, the backstop on top there, it's just not safe enough. It's too risky, an arrow will go over and you are in trouble. I'm at my back fence now. Now, uh, for those who see my practice videos where I shoot my backyard, uh, you often see me more recently place a target uh, on my grass in front of my shed. And I'm standing on my little boardwalk over there. I'm shooting this way towards the back fence. now. Uh, behind my house, there's nothing really here. Um, it used to be an open field. Uh, th th there was a factory behind here. Open field. Now they're doing some construction for new housing. So uh, for now, it's just dirt piles and a couple of empty trucks. So for, to me, the risk factor is safe enough where if I do somehow get an arrow over the fence or through the fence, then there's no risk involved to anybody on the other side. However, and just keep in mind, Wood is, is an arrow proof. Uh, depending on the material and the thickness, it might not stop an arrow. Arrows can still puncture through, especially from a high power bow, and some might go clean through. But even with a solid barrier, there is something to consider. Again, there are, you might find there are knots in the wood which form holes when it comes to planks. And over here is one such knot. There's a very small hole here, it's that big. Now, what happened once, somebody warned me, but this already happened, like it's a very low possibility, but it does happen. What happened was, um, I was shooting from my Samix H. The arrow glanced off the top of my foam target, and it actually went through this one tiny hole. Now, it actually went all the way through, and was stopped by the feathers. If the feathers weren't there, it would have got all the way through, so... This solid barrier and this tiny hole are risk factors. So you probably recognize this angle. This is where I normally shoot. I've got a, a kind of what used to be a garden here. Now it's all covered in grass and there's a bit of boardwalk where I can stand with a nice flat um, uh, surface to shoot from. Um, this goes, I normally shoot from here because I put the camera there and shoot here. Uh, but I've got another 5 meters that way, so I can shoot uh, 5, 10 or 15 meters just from here, which is a pretty nice space to have. Now the target I used to put uh, closer to the shed. Uh, in front of the shed didn't work because if I miss, shed has holes in it. Um, and now I used to place it further back about 10 meters from here. I now move it close to around 5 and there are a couple of reasons. 
there's it's going it's safer i'm less likely to miss um the ground uneven so if i do miss it's going to hit like the grass behind it and there are some bricks and some tile slats behind that as well so it's an extra safety backstop in the in the direct uh line of the adiara so this is slightly safer uh again i'm not likely to miss at five meters even shooting a bare bow uh, i'm not going to miss it. if i do miss it's going to hit towards an area where it'll stay stuck in the ground or it's going to hit a solid object behind it so to me that's more acceptable it might seem like you know that open space behind there is um unsafe again nothing behind there right now so that's considered very high backstop compared to where i'm shooting at and unless i'm sky drawing like an idiot i'm not going to go over so to me that is safe enough and go i've taken reasonable steps to ensure that i'm not putting anyone at risk here i've got what is perhaps my favorite and safest arrangement in my backyard i have the foam target elevated on a wheelie bin so it's the right height there's the brick wall behind it uh, so the arrow will not go through the back and it's around seven meters apart so there's enough safety backstop so the arrow won't come straight back at me the wall is high enough where i can't go over it from where i'm shooting and if I do shoot too high, I'm going to hit the ceiling there, or I'm going to hit the top of the wall. Um, the distance is also fair enough too. From here to the camera, it's around 3 metres. From where I normally shoot, that's about 5 metres. And that's enough for backyard practice. Backyard practice is all about form. It's all about going through the process, about reinforcing good muscle memory. It doesn't have to be about accuracy or distance or getting good score. Now, if I do want to shoot a round, if I do want to do some long-range shooting, then I'll do it at my club. Now, I'll, I'll go to my club and shoot there, as I should. This is more of if I need to do something in my spare time, or if I haven't practiced for a while, if I've missed out on training, then I might do some catch-up here. But this is by far my favorite arrangement. Hopefully, this gives you enough of the insight of all the risk factors which might be involved. Uh, again, this I think this is a fairly average backyard, but there are obviously things in your property which will uh, affect you more than me. Um, but just to go over the main ideas, number one, make sure it's legal in your area and that you have permission to do so. Uh, make sure you don't endanger people or property and that you take reasonable steps to make your shooting space safe. That includes proper backstop materials and preventing arrows from leaving the shooting area. Um, also keep in mind and be considerate of the people that use your space because you might control your physical surroundings, but you can't control people. So do bear in mind there are people outside the property, on the street, might be kids in your family, these might be risk factors. Um, so again, again, this is my experience, uh, officially from an association point of view, you're not meant to be shooting in your backyard and there have been incidents, uh, but it's mostly legal in most areas as long as you take reasonable steps. Uh, if you have any more tips or advice or you have your own arrangement which you can share, feel free to comment below. I hope this is helpful. This is New Sensei. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.